Okay, hello, uh, John Marsh here, looking at the midterm two review. Going to give you all uh, a quick talk through of this in case uh, you need just a, a little bit of help getting started on any of the problems. First of all, page one is just uh, uh, hopefully a, a nice one page summary. You read this, and, and it's kind of like reading the chapter summary at the end of the chapter, but it's in my words. Um, I would definitely recommend reading the chapter summaries at the end of chapters four and five for this. Uh, it does tell you a list of things that aren't going to be on the exam that I didn't cover too much, and it emphasizes that making your own handwritten uh, quote cheat sheet uh, is a, an important part of your studying process. Okay, so this gives you the topics in a nutshell. This is a chart I made sort of like the one I made on the board several times where I have data uh, either digital or analog in the rows and signals either digital or analog in the columns uh, sort of dividing up um, between chapters four and five and adding a lot of little details about uh, all of this hopefully in a nice summary for you. Okay on to the to the problems there are uh, 16 problems on this review sheet. You should try to do them all if you can. Uh, on the line coding schemes, basically I say I'm recommending you get out a piece of graph paper, uh, write some zeros and ones across the top, uh, and then encode those using various schemes on that piece of graph paper. Uh, a good way to practice decoding is to create your own encoding picture and then come back to it later after hiding the bit pattern at the top and making sure you can read the bit pattern uh, off of it. Okay, so I'm, I'm suggesting you just do this on your own. You've had lots of practice in the homework. Uh, block coding and scrambling, uh, chapter four topic. Uh, basically, problems two and three, make sure that you understand uh, at least a little bit about the the data rates and the overhead incurred in 4B, 5B, for example. Okay, every four bits in, you, you're going to transmit five bits, so that represents a 25% overhead. Uh, and then it asks you to explain, in your own words, why we do this. Okay, so read the chapter, make sure you understand uh, that explanation. Same thing with scrambling, basically asking you to explain it in your own words, draw some little pictures, make sure you've read the chapter and understood it. Uh, analog to digital conversion, I gave you a few problems on this because it's so widely applicable. Uh, in problem four, uh, I come up with a, a sensor, a temperature sensor that we're going we're to record the, the temperature once a minute in the house, say, uh, and we're going to send that data up to our uh, server, which is connected via Wi-Fi. And basically, I'm asking you to understand uh, what bit depth is uh, in your sampling and sampling rate okay and, and you're going to figure out you know how many seconds there are in a day that sort of thing or minutes in a day something like that uh, and figure out what the data rate is figure out how much data is collected in a day and then pop that up to your server via Wi-Fi uh, on a relatively fast connection so this is really just working with numbers with units making sure you understand uh, your, your rate of digitized data coming in um, problems five and six are a little bit like the one in the homework where you had to reverse engineer the, uh, the, the digitized samples, okay? And, and problems five and six are basically the same. One of them is with three bits of depth and one is with four bit of, bits of depth. One of them has a voltage range plus, minus one to plus one. The other has a range from minus 20 to plus 20. The minus 20 to plus 20 range is a lot like uh, the example in the textbook, for example. And basically, I'm asking you to figure out, uh, you know, we go from uh, some voltage max all the way down to some voltage min, uh, usually with zero in the middle. And basically, depending on the number of bits, we're dividing this up into some number of little ranges. And I'm asking you to come up with the numbers uh, that are appearing at each of these values uh, that separate the various ranges, and also the numbers that appear at the center, which is what I call the uh, the sampled voltage values and the voltage ranges. Okay, so this is the voltage range.
for example, and this is the sampled voltage value right in the center of that range. So any voltages within this range are going to be rounded off to this value. Okay, so we might have three or four of them uh, at that level. Okay, um, so we end up with some values like this. Okay, and okay, so that's five and six basically uh, writing down a bunch of numbers evenly spaced. Uh, CD quality sound. This is an example I did on the board. I want to make sure you know how to do it. It's important. Uh, Snipe with sampling rate. Uh, the data rate, data rate for stereo, and then multiply by the length of a song to get the total uh, amount of data. Okay, and this is uncompressed, so it's not MP3. This is a WAV file. Uh, eight and nine, make sure you understand aliasing and Nyquist sampling and non-uniform sampling. Read the, read the book or watch the videos to make sure you understand those and know how to explain them in your own words. Uh, transmission modes, parallel and serial. Again, I explained it on the board with pictures only. We're going to get into a little bit more quantitative study of these in the next chapter, but for right now, it's just the idea. Make sure you know you understand the ideas and know how to explain them in your own words. For digital modulation, uh, the advantage of FSK over PSK and QAM. Make sure you've read the book and understand the part of the lecture where I did this. I didn't emphasize this enough in the lecture. Uh, and so I want you to make sure you look it up in the book and, and understand that. And then 13, 14, and 15 are pretty much standard problems. Uh, making sure you understand, uh, you know, how to relate the symbol rate, uh, the number of bits per symbol, and uh, the data rate. Oops. This is the bit rate. This is the bits per symbol, and this is the baud or symbol rate, symbols per second. Okay, making sure you understand that equation, making sure you understand that the number of levels is 2 to the nb power, okay, and that the number of levels is often given in the name of the modulation format. So 8 PSK has 8 levels, for example. Okay, 256 QAM has 256 symbols. Okay, uh, basically they're all fairly, all three of these are fairly straightforward, bit rate, baud rate. Um, uh, problem 15, uh, make sure you understand the, uh, the bandwidth requirements for FSK. And basically if you have say two different frequencies in your channel plan for FSK frequency shift keying each one is going to have a certain width of the spectrum associated with the modulation uh, with uh, just modulating the carrier but then there's also a width associated with uh, the channel plan okay so from here to here delta F okay and it turns out the total width, uh, this, this is what, 1 plus B times R S, the symbol rate. And so the total width for this case turns out to be delta F plus 1 plus B times the symbol rate. And when you go to multiple ones, I uh, explain this in the notes on Angel. I actually made the fence post problem error. Uh, in fact, this width is uh, L minus 1 times delta F, or sometimes we write that as M minus 1 times delta F. Okay? Uh, so when L is 4, that is, we have four frequencies here, it's only three times the spacing. And uh, on the board, I had written M delta F and done an example problem incorrectly using that. So double check that and then uh, so so there's these equations and make sure you know how to use them and draw this little picture for number 15. Finally on 16 to understand analog modulation uh, make sure your cheat sheet has the the equations for the, the bandwidth and uh, this is a straightforward question 
uh, asking about that. Basically, uh, if you low pass filter at 150 hertz, your spectrum then goes uh, as a baseband from 0 to 150 hertz. Everything above that has been cut off. And so uh, we modulate a carrier frequency 100 kilohertz, and uh, it asks you about the bandwidth, and it gives you which modulation factor to use. Okay, well, I hope that helps. Good luck.